Welcome back. I'm Elaine Reyes. In 1988, General Augusto Pinochet's grip on power in Chile was weakening. International pressure led him to call a vote that would decide his fate. The new film, No, which received rave reviews at the Cannes Film Festival in May, tells the true story of the unorthodox methods used by the opposition to win the vote and oust Pinochet. America's now contributing correspondent Brian Burns traveled to the Chilean capital, Santiago, to meet the star of the film and the people who inspired it. The highly lauded Mexican actor Gael Garcia Bernal says he chose to star in the Chilean film No because he thinks the events depicted in it are as important now as they were when they happened a quarter century ago. Not only a landmark for uh, Chilean life nowadays, but also for the world, the entire world, because it was the, the first time that the uh, dictator was overthrown by democratic means. The democratic means was a referendum vote called by Chilean dictator Augusto Pinochet in 1988 in response to growing displeasure with his regime both at home and abroad. A yes vote supported the strong man, a no vote would send him packing. Rather than attack the tyrant, who was accused of human rights abuses, the opposition chose to wage a positive campaign that focused on the potential in Chile's future. Garcia Bernal plays René Saavedra, a brash young ad man who helps create the colorful logo, upbeat jingles, and peppy TV spots that ultimately made the No campaign a success. It was a style of political marketing that had never existed in the region before. And this was the first time that, that in Latin America it was tried out, you know, in 1988. It was like the beginning of, of, uh, of doing a campaign and actually they, they came and they succeeded uh, without the, the, you know, the, the, let's say the structural support. They were the antagonists of the story, you know, and, and they were working with, a, with something that was a negative, which was a no, rather than a yes, you know. Uh, they didn't have a candidate, no, right. which is, makes, plays a big, it was a yeah, big... There was uh, to rally around, it wasn't a person, it yeah, was an idea. Yeah, exactly, it was an idea, and, uh, and so it was incredibly difficult, and I think they managed to pull out an incredible, uh, an, an incredible story. A story whose roots date back to 1973, when Chile's history was changed forever. This is the La Moneda Presidential Palace in Santiago. It was here on September 11th, 1973, that General Augusto Pinochet led a violent coup that left then-President Salvador Allende dead and swept Pinochet into power. The Pinochet dictatorship ruled unrivaled for 15 years until the 1988 referendum vote depicted in the film No swept him out of La Moneda. Even now, 24 years after that historic vote, the legacy of the Pinochet era continues to loom large over Chilean society. Pinochet's regime tortured and murdered thousands of Chileans, yet he retained wide support. A lot of people know how Pinochet got in power, but nobody knows how he got out. Director Pablo Lorraine says he wanted to examine his country's recent past and accurately portray just how divisive the referendum vote was at the time. Uh, yes, uh, got almost 43 percent, which is a lot. And today I would say that most people wouldn't do it, you know, wouldn't vote again uh, because we knew what happened, who these people really was where um, after, you know, the referendum when democracy came back and, and then we start to open files and see exactly what happened. And I think Pinochet is considered today by most people as someone who is really a bastard and, and, and it's somebody that you don't want to have close in, in any way. Garcia Bernal's character is a composite of two men, Eugenio Garcia and Jose Manuel Salcedo. Garcia had studied philosophy, but was working in advertising when he was recruited as the campaign's creative director. Durante el gobierno de Pinochet, la mayoría de los intelectuales o la gente que no eh, concordaba con él tuvo que buscar pegas alternativas, trabajos alternativos, como por ejemplo trabajar en publicidad. ¿no? Eh, y eso, eso hizo que se juntara un grupo de gente 
muy talentosa detrás de esta campaña, que, que eran todos opositores, por supuesto, al, al régimen. Salcedo was an actor who often had to perform underground for fear of military harassment. He spent hours with Garcia Bernal to help the actor understand the often dangerous conditions in which they had worked during the No Movement. We know perfectly well that in that moment we had the opportunity to defeat a dictatorship by pacific means, with a vote, with a pencil and paper. And this was extraordinarily important for everything that's happened after that, till now. Uh, so it uh, was an, uh, really an historic opportunity for us and for the country and for the people of Chile. La alegría ya viene. No received critical acclaim at the Cannes Film Festival, which led to several international distribution deals. The attention meant that anticipation for the film in Chile was extraordinarily high. At the Santiago premiere in late July, three of Chile's ex-presidents were in attendance, including 93-year-old Patricio Alwin, the man who succeeded Pinochet. The night before the premiere, producers scheduled a private screening for university students who themselves have been making world headlines recently. Over the past two years, students in Chile have staged noisy, often violent protests demanding reforms to the country's education system, a system that's been in place since the Pinochet era. The filmmakers of No and the students themselves say they see many parallels between today's calls for change and those depicted in the film. 24-year-old art student Paula Gonzalez was born the same year as the Pinochet referendum. Este plebiscito está perdido desde el momento en que la derecha fascista lo convocó. The movie meshes actual archive footage from 1988 with new dramatic scenes shot on rebuilt U-matic cameras imported from the United States. The low quality image purposely blurs the line between reality and fantasy, old and new. It's like shooting with a, with a phone, you know, or a very low quality video. But the look of it is not possible to create it in post-production. You know, when you say, no, you pick the HD and then you do some post-production, no, it's not the same, it would never look the same. As a Mexican actor appearing in a Chilean film dealing with a highly sensitive historical topic, Garcia Bernal says he knew his performance would be scrutinized. Were you yeah. apprehensive about jumping into that, especially since you're not Chilean? Uh, actually, no, I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't worried about that because, also, I mean, in a way, my my um, my upbringing wasn't so alienated to to what happened here. I mean, I grew up in Mexico in in 1988. There was a big uh, fraud in the elections, and uh, therefore, I, I I mean, the first time I voted, for example, was the first time that uh, that. Uh, uh, the, the another party other than the PRI won in Mexico City. Uh, and the first time in my generation voted was the first time that the PRI was was out of of uh, of the of the of power in, in Mexico. So uh, so in a way I I I also wanna exercise my freedom all the time, you know, and I wanna speak out and I wanna be part of this and uh, and I'm not apprehensive at all about it. On the contrary, I mean um, if, if there is a sense of apprehension that, that somebody warns me about it, uh, I, even more I go into it. Yeah, I want to do it even more. The result is a performance and a film that will likely continue to get accolades as it is seen around the world, educating new generations about Chile's bloody past and the brilliant tactics used to usher in its brighter future.